U.S. steel production booming because of steel tariffs put in place by President Trump. That's according to a recent op that uh, says, uh, even as some pundits and economists say America's steel industry is in decline, for those who understand the steel, understand the steel industry, it's clear that the administration's steel tariffs have generated a boom in steel investment and a shift to newer technologies that are creating higher paying jobs for thousands of new steel workers. The author of that piece, chief economist at the Coalition for a Prosperous America, Jeff Ferry, joins me now. Jeff, you know, I, I took a look at some of the data from the industry, and even the raw steel production, uh, which bottomed in 2016, has been on a steady incline. How did this happen? Well, I think the steel tariffs played a crucial role in the revival of the U.S. steel industry. I don't think you can uh, avoid that fact. That's the central fact is that in 2018, the Trump administration put 25% tariffs on imported steel, and the industry has been on a tear ever since. What's interesting to me is that the usual suspects were upset when this was announced. And it was a combination, obviously, the Democrats' media, but also good old-fashioned, uh, you know, Republican or conservative uh, business owners, businesses, the Business Roundtable, Chamber of Commerce, and even those folks uh, who believe in the uh, orthodoxy of, of Adam Smith. What is it that they missed uh, about all of this uh, that they got wrong? Well, you know, a lot of the uh, these business types and the old-fashioned conservatives, as well as most of the Democratic Party, subscribe to what I call free trade religion. In other words, they believe in free trade without any evidence or facts to support their case. And in some cases, free trade is better. But in the case of steel, what you've had in tw for the last 20 years is the Chinese dumping a huge amount of subsidized, uneconomic steel on the world market that's depressed the entire world market. And it's made steel makers in this country afraid to invest. Now, in March 2018, Donald Trump took office. And he also appointed Wilbur Ross Secretary of Commerce. And Wilbur Ross, as you may know, used to own a large steel company as an investor and sold it to ArcelorMittal. So those two men knew a lot about the steel industry. And they knew that if you could find a way to tell the steel industry, hey, look, we're not going to let foreigners dump subsidized product in this market, that steel companies would go and invest. And that's exactly what's happened. And if you say, what did people miss? You know, I'd come back to free trade religion. People have all sorts of fallacious beliefs about trade and tariffs. I mean, the most um, extraordinary or the best learning, I would say, from the last two years in the steel industry is that you can levy a 25 percent tariff and not raise prices of a good. And I say that because steel prices last year in 2019 were actually slightly lower than they were in 2017, before the tariff. So just think about that. Steel industry is healthy. Steel consumers are better off because they're paying roughly the same price for steel as they were before the tariffs. But now they've got a U.S. steel industry that's able to invest and meet their needs better than ever before. They've got more security than before, because as long as these tariffs continue, and let's hope they do, the steel industry will continue to grow and invest in new technology um, product, providing better quality steel. Yeah. In other words, lighter weight, stronger steel, because that's what we okay. get as these companies invest in newer technology. That's exactly what my next question was going to be to you, uh, these new technologies. And, and, and so how does that help us with respect to beyond economic freedom? I mean, I mean, you know, I hate to say it, but maybe at one point we're going to have to think about rebuilding our military or warships as China's military gets stronger. I, I would think no matter what, in that circumstance, we always want to be able to produce these things ourselves rather than waiting on imports. We learned a pretty tough lesson with COVID-19 and some of those key medical ingredients that aren't made in this country either. And at our coalition, we fight day and night to reshore some of these crucial industries. Steel, we've already got significant capacity. We need to build it up and be, we need to be strong in every type of steel, because as you say, steel is essential for national security and, you know, steel is no longer your grandfather's steel like the steel in the Model T. Today, there are a hundred different varieties of steel, different alloys, different manufacturing techniques, right. varying right. strength, varying lightness, well, varying applications. And in military, there's a whole host of applications, you know, things used well, in this, you know, the good lightweight news, aerospace. Yes. And then you need really strong... The, the, good news, um, the good news is that we make it here now 
and it's working. Jeff, thank you so much. It was a fantastic piece.